In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the tiny but really surprising TT Artisan's 50 millimeter F2 lens for LMAP. We're gonna be looking at its video capabilities and whether this lens is worth picking up for all of you budget L-mount maybe Lumix S5 video shooters out there. And full disclaimer, they did send me this lens for free, so I might be just a little bit biased. So my name's Nolan, I'm a videographer, not a filmmaker, and I make videos all about cameras, lenses, and creativity, so do with that what you like. And I would also like to thank Isaiah, my indentured servant who's helping me film this video. We're also here at beautiful Coiner Spring Park in Virginia, and uh, hoping that walnuts don't fall on our heads, so. Hopefully they don't. Anyways, for value, this lens is definitely priced to sell at only $80 USD. And for a full frame, fast F2 aperture lens, that's also really, really small. I half expected this lens to be kind of terrible, but it's actually not. When you first take a look at the lens, it becomes obvious that it's really small. For scale, here are my other 50 millimeter lenses, and it's just tiny compared to almost anything else. Along those lines, the filter thread is also a small 43 millimeters, which means you'll probably have to get a step-up ring set to fit an ND filter onto the end of it. And in my case, I actually didn't have a 43 millimeter to 77 millimeter, so uh, just something to be aware of. It also comes with a threaded lens cap as opposed to the pinch mechanism, which to me feels a bit more secure when I'm putting in my backpack or anywhere else. And because it's so small, I'm much more likely to have this lens on my S5 as sort of like a walk around general purpose lens because it's just so discreet. And because the lens is screw on, I can really just throw it in my bag and not worry about the front element being scratched or anything like that. Moving on to the focus and aperture ring. One thing to take note of is that this lens is fully manual, meaning you can't use the camera to control focus or aperture. The aperture ring itself isn't really anything special. Uh, it works fine, and it also has the click mechanism to adjust your aperture settings in hard stops. The focus ring actually really impressed me. After reviewing the Makey 50 millimeter, Makey 50 millimeter, bleh, after millimeter, the focus ring really impressed me. After reviewing the 50 mill, let's try to get it millimeter. After reviewing the Makey 50 millimeter lens, I was expecting this focus ring to be even more sloppy since it's significantly cheaper, but that's not the case at all. The focus ring is very, very smooth throughout the entire range, and I can't feel any play when pulling focus. Focus. Along those lines, the focus throw feels perfect for my style of shooting. I was able to track my son running around really easily and smoothly without having to adjust my hand to turn it more or less. So huge props to TT Artisans for making such a great manual focusing experience for only like 80 bucks. Now the optical quality is when this lens really starts to get pretty interesting. So 50 millimeters is a pretty nice focal length on full frame. It's tight enough for portraits and wide enough for establishing shots if you have room to back up. Just note that prime lenses like these can't zoom. It's fixed at that 50 millimeter focal length. And some say that's a con, but I see it as a way to be more creative with what you have. Now when it comes to sharpness at f2, it's actually not too bad, but it has enough detail preserved in 4K to be pretty usable wide open for video. Now one area that this lens does definitely struggle with is flaring. Once you start backlighting and the sun hits the front element just a little bit, you can get a couple of issues. The first is a strong blue or purple tint when pointing directly into the sun, though it does maintain some contrast, which is interesting. The second is when you're slightly like offset and the sun hits the lens at an angle, you get significant contrast loss. So you're pointing directly at the sun, better contrast, a lot of color issues. And then if you're like slightly offset and the sun hits it at an angle, you get a significant loss of contrast. It's kind of weird. So if you're planning on shooting some backlit subjects, either bring a matte box or plan your shoot accordingly. Now for minimum focusing distance, this lens is rated at just under 19 and a half inches, which isn't actually far away from the Panasonic 50 millimeter 1.8, which is only an inch and a half closer at 18 inches. I'm not a huge fan of either of those numbers since shooting on the 11 inch minimum focusing distance of the Sigma 18 to 35, but for general purpose video and some decent close-ups, this lens does just fine. Now, focus breathing is also a pretty big issue with this lens. Now, this means that when you focus from minimum to infinity, you see the frame literally zoom in and out, which is potentially distracting if your content isn't good enough to draw the attention away. Overall, I would definitely recommend this lens for anyone looking for a cheap, manual 50 millimeter lens that's small enough, small enough to carry around with you and good enough for some decent quality walk around video. I hope this video was helpful and thanks so much for watching.